In today's episode of the Spring Report, we are covering the new Mizuno ST220 drivers, the STZ and the STX. We'll tell you everything you need to know. We've got Thomas here to do some testing as well. Golfers, make sure you skip to the last chapter of the video for our final thoughts, and also like and subscribe to our channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing at Minnetonka. Today we've got new drivers. Uh, Mizuno ST220, the STZ and the STX. Um, Mizuno has come a long way with their drivers over the past probably two or three generations. Uh, they've really advanced things. They've, uh, I think they've really made the look a lot cleaner, but also the technology involved is a lot better as well. And let's face it, they're catching up with their competitors too. Yep. I mean, they haven't been in the driver market forever, but every year they come out with something new and you just know it's getting closer and closer to their competitors. Yeah, so there's, there's the two models here, STZ and STX. Uh, the STZ is probably going to be the one that fits the most players, designed for kind of that low spin but really high ball speeds. STX is a little bit more of that draw bias head uh, for those golfers fighting that slice. But each of them, as we kind of get into the tech here, Thomas, each of them has that kind of optimally placed 20 gram weight, uh, stainless steel weight in the back. That's going to deliver that high MOI, and that's one of the. I mean, that's what every golfer is trying to achieve, right? When you miss the center of the face that head needs to stay stable and provide that good performance still. Yeah, ball speed retention, spin rate retention, mm -hmm. where the ball flies, make sure it doesn't go flying offline if you don't quite catch in the right spot. MOI is huge. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the biggest thing what we're seeing here with drivers in the last couple of years is they're really focusing on MOI. So any way they can make sure that those off-center hits go straight, yep. it's a win. Yep, and so with Mizuno drivers, the club face is kind of the key component. Uh, and they have a kind of a unique super alloy titanium, they call it club face, uh, 2041 beta titanium. It's a lot of big words there, but essentially it's a <laughs> unique material that's about 17% stronger than kind of the traditional titanium that is frequently used for drivers. And so that adds some ball speed. And they also have a multi-thickness Cortec club face, um, which you know basically there's a little bit more thickness in certain spots of the face, which provides some added stability, added ball speed there. So. They do a really good job of engineering things, testing things, making sure that all across the face, they're adding that performance. Because as we know, as I know, you know, I'm not hitting the center of the face every time. Yeah, I mean, I think about who they've got on their team, like Chris Fauchel, he's mm -hmm. you know, a big right. proponent of why Mizuno is you know, taking the steps to catch their competitors. And engineering's key. And you know, I am fully confident that if we put this driver up against any other driver, it's probably gonna form just as well these mm -hmm. days. And then uh, uh, STZ model has what they call a modern player's profile. So uh, it's, you know, they have some of those elements of like that weight way back look, but it also is a little bit of that player's look that you like, where it's still a little compact as well. And then the STX does have kind of what they call modern game improvement profile. So you'll maybe see a little bit of that weight in the heel, and then obviously that's going to create that draw bias, but also some more weight back. So uh, adding that forgiveness. So. Uh, we covered a lot here, but I think we should also talk a little bit on the stock shaft piece too from the, STs, the ST drivers here, the 220 models. Um, they they kind of got everything. They got your lightweight, light flex, and then yep. you also got kind of your uh, stiffer to extra stiff. Yeah, the, the lightweight shaft they have is they got the Odilla Ascent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of manufacturers are being gravitating towards this because it is very lightweight. It's able to generate some club speed for the golfers that don't swing maybe as fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also got uh, the, the Tenzai Blue. Yep. That shaft has been kind of a, a staple in quite a few different manufacturers in here in the past. Um, and you know, it's gonna be a little bit you know, lower spinning shaft overall, but it's, you know, it's, it's been a great golf shaft, um, fully mm -hmm. confident. We're gonna, I'm gonna hit with that shaft today okay. as, we, as we test the two heads. Okay, perfect. Well, we've got a lot of information out there, a lot of the technology, the ST220 drivers. I'm really excited about them. Mizuno, again, making tons of strides. Are you ready to hit some shots here? Let's do it. All right, so Thomas, you've got the, it looks like STX right now. Um, what are we, in terms of specs and adjustments here, because we don't have the same loft for both heads, so how are we gonna manage that? Right, so the STX, it comes in 10.5, doesn't come in a 9.5 degree head. Mm -hmm. um, so what I have done, and we'll test both of them at 9.5. So I've got the 10.5 set minus one, so it's nine and a half. Yeah. Now keep in mind, when you do make these adjustments, it's always gonna change the lie or the face angle a yeah. little bit there too. But this is already a draw bias club. I'm, I still anticipate, even though I'm opening the face up a little bit going minus one, that it still would be a draw bias mm -hmm. club. Okay. Yeah. And I think to start out, 
We'll hit five or six shots here with the STX and STZ. Yeah. Just stock swing. No, yeah. I, won't, I won't go after too hard. Just try and have the same swing between the two of them. Yeah. And then after that, we'll optimize a little bit. We'll probably play around with the STZ with a little bit faster speed and a little less loft. Because okay. everyone wants to know, you know, is it going to go as Just far as... see how much you know, distance there really is. Yeah. 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 So head to head first and then, uh, and then we'll dissect a little further. So that wasn't probably one of my, my better strikes, but forgiving. That was that's probably say, the most important thing. You still thing got to take that away. draw out of it, and it, you, you only, you know, the, that's a low ball speed from you. The right. Low smash factor, but it went over 300 yards. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the importance here is, is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That spin is pretty low on those two. Yeah. Some of the ball flight, little, little draw there. Yeah, that's so 1500 spin. That's that's mm -hmm. pretty low. Now keep in mind, a lot of that's to do with attack angle and hit location. Right. I'm very willing to bet that I hit that in the maybe a little high toe. Yeah, so I'm hitting it pretty pretty high on the face, mm -hmm. which uh, is helping that spin. Which is going to help that spin there. Yeah. What are you feeling at impact? I mean. I'm feeling like I haven't quite hit it in the in the middle okay. for sure. It, it sounded a little bit louder, and that's probably because I haven't. You know, I've been catching up here. Sure. I've been catching the sweet spot. Okay. Um, now I think this is important just to show you know, how forgiving this yeah. particular driver is. I think every time there's been that little drawer, so yep. the STX is designed to drawer. Right. But even though I haven't hit it in the right spot, it's uh, yeah. You know, I've hit it over 300 yards with. You know, both speeds in the mid 150s. Yeah, I mean, look at your average hit location right now with, uh, with those three shots there. So you can kind of see that it's still performing really well for you, even though you're, you're a little bit you know, hitting it high on the face. Yeah. Well, let's see if I can move it a little bit lower. That was closer to the middle. So that bull speed jump, at least. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah, that was a lot closer to uh, the middle there, so. You can kind of see then, I mean, it, it's, the thing is, it's the performance and the trajectory is still pretty similar. I mean, you hit right. that one in the, more in the middle and the previous couple were a little higher and not a ton changed really. Yeah, and when you're hitting a, a driver, you want to have your landing angle between about 30 to 40 degrees. Now, you can get away with a higher landing angle, but as long as, as, long as that spin rate's low. Yeah. So if I had that spin at 1750 on that shot, I could get away with a little higher landing angle, which is going to chase out. Yeah. But most golfers maybe don't swing up on it at six yeah. degrees with their driver and hit it high in the face and mm -hmm. keep that spin rate every, down every single time. That's, yeah, that's pretty impressive there. I mean, that's 312 with club speed of only 110 miles an hour. That's, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. There's another high one there again. Yep. There you go. Look at the club path, face angle, and face to path <laughs> number on that. I mean, as long, <laughs> it's good, minus the fact that it hit in the middle of the face. Yep, it's very so, high. Yeah, high middle of the face there. So we're seeing nothing, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, not your best shots, right? Right, and I think this is good because, you know, this, this club's designed for golfers that aren't going to have their, their best strikes all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, this game's hard. Not everyone's going to hit in the middle of the face. Even I can hit in the middle of the face right. every single time. Um, but we're seeing forgiveness is what we're seeing. Yeah. We're seeing that. And you're seeing talking about that spin rate retention. Yeah. We're talking about that bolt. Yeah, you know, it's look at that. Plus or minus 85 there yeah. on four swings. Now, and we should clarify, we get this question a lot in comments and stuff too. You can get away with spin that low because you swing fast enough, even at 110, which isn't your kind of you know, all out swing. You're, yep. you're probably laying back a little bit there. Uh, but something to note would be, you know, the reason you're having such low spin is because your attack angle is, you know, five degrees up here. Right. Uh, someone with a different swing probably swings a little bit steeper. Most golfers would. They're going to get more spin, and they're going to be in that window for them probably. Uh, that fits their game. So just something to note there on that on that spin thing. You know, most golfers 1694 average probably won't work for them, but for you and your attack angle, it does. Right. Attack angle and hit location yeah, is le leading to that. Uh, now, if you're seeing that little spin, first thing we would do is probably increase the loft on, on the driver. Yeah. 
Now, what was my average landing angle just to see there on those? 36.6. 36.6. So it's, it's good. Like yeah. I mentioned 30 to 40 is going to be where the range you want, want to be in. If yeah. that spin rate's you know, that low and we're seeing that landing angle close to 30 degrees, mm -hmm. we're going to need to bump the loft up. Right, right. You've got. And the nice thing with Mizuno is you've got the ability to do that not only by changing the head. However, I always highly recommend fitting the right loft on the head first, then making the modification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with Mizuno, you've got plus or minus two degrees. Right. Yeah. And then uh, the other thing, too, I just want to touch on before we move on to STZ, draw bias club, all five left of center. Uh, and even with, God, what, what shot was that? This last one here, we had 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0.0. You still had that kind of, you know, little draw to it still. It was just a little uh, left with, of center. You know, help with hit location and things like that. But you were, yep. that draw was showing up every time with this shot in this club. So, uh, you know, encouraging those players that maybe do have that kind of slice uh, tendency. So, right. Um, yeah, this is, right. this is great. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to hit it in the middle of the face every single time. Today, show that. Right. But it's showing the forgiveness with this particular Yeah, I mean, that, that dispersion is great for kind of where your hit location was, maybe, especially for you, a little bit all over the place. So, yep. uh, all right, STZ now. Okay. Let's move into that one. And I do want to get your opinion on how that looks as well when you set that down. Yeah, and I'll keep the shaft on here real briefly, just talk about the differences between the two and if they can notice anything. Um, yeah, STX. It seems like it's, you know, they're both 460 cc's, but it seems like from maybe like heel to toe, it's like a little bit, little bit larger. Mm -hmm. Well, with the STZ, it just seems maybe just a little bit taller. Okay. It looks smaller. Yeah. Um, but the way I they think it should, design yeah. the head. And you can see that yeah. weight, that back weight too, that 20 gram weight, it's yep. a little more towards the heel in the STX there. Yeah, so if I was gonna measure from the edge of the face to the back of your, with the STX, it would be longer. Yeah. With the STZ, from little, the face to the back, it would be shorter. A little more compact, yeah. yeah. Well, that one didn't go mm -hmm. left. That's the first thing I was going to say that. There. Yeah, first thing I noticed is that it's a new trajectory we're seeing right there. Yeah, and that could be a little bit of user error, leaving the face 2.1 degrees open. Yeah. But the club definitely sits a little bit different. And I think mm -hmm. that STX you know, is designed to go left. Mm -hmm. I think it was doing its job. Oh my God. What's wrong with that? I mean, I came over the top a little on it. But. Well, came over the top of it, but I mean, what's, that's still, I mean, that looks basically like it landed in the same spot as the STX shots. Without yeah. the draw, it's more right. of a pull. It was a little bit more of a pull there, yeah. All right. There's some more of that draw again. Yep. That's the furthest one I've hit I so think that's, far. I think that's higher, the highest ball speed, too, I've seen. Yeah, 162.5. Got to be close with that, with that speed, yeah, with that club speed. Yeah, it was only 110.4, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what my average has, has been. It was pretty good. Another one out to the right a little bit. Yeah. Wow. All right. Talk about a straight ball flight. Yeah, that was a pretty good swing there. Good path numbers, and mm -hmm. it's interesting to bring that up because when we, what we saw with the STX, you know, path being basically dead neutral, we'll flew a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. That one path was basically dead neutral. Yep and flew dead straight. Right, that, that's the interesting thing. I think it was, uh, so we had this shot here, which you have a, almost a zero on all these numbers, right? And you have it just right of center, and then you have this number here, uh, this shot here, which was uh, with the STX, zeros across the board, and it's just a little left. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, so we can look at, you actually got a perfect uh, club speed match here, so that's perfect. good. Perfect. Um, we got the numbers, we got the, da uh, the dispersion. So, and let's clarify again what you did to the face angle by moving the STX down a degree in loft. Did you open the face yeah, actually? The, the face angle is open up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, so even with the to face, note, yeah. mm -hmm. a little bit open with that particular model, we notice, oh, I mean, that dispersion pattern is left, but also, you know, well yeah. inside the mm -hmm. STZ. Yeah. That's yeah. something that it's, I'm noticing right away, just looking at the map. I'm also noticing it's a consistently left club. You're kind of, you know, eliminating the right side, yeah. um, which with the STZ, obviously you had a couple 
with that face a little bit more open over here and over here that kind of maybe skewed the the, the dispersion a little bit but yep. still you see that right miss is available there with the stz um, numbers wise uh what would your you know we got uh, about an eight yard seven yard bump in carry distance but the total's pretty similar well, and that's because a little that bit more ball speed mm -hmm. and then that spin being a little bit higher and yep. that's where spin can help you get the ball up in the air to carry a little, little bit further yep. um the st X, when I wasn't hitting in the right spot on the face, the spin was hurting me a little bit on distance. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, you'll sure. see most golfers really in you know, that 2000 to 2700 mark with regards to spin. Yeah. Unless you're hitting in the middle of the face and you're hitting really, really high up on it to decrease the spin loft. Yeah. You know, it's one, one thing I want to do too, so because right now we have, you know, we gained, uh, you know, seven yards or whatever of carry distance with the STZ, but uh, I would say dispersion wise, the STX was a little bit better, right? Right. Um, I mean, so I kind of wanted to look at this on, we'll go average STZ. You got, uh, that's your you know average hit location ish. So it's still a little bit high on the face with both on average, yep. but um, you see how it's even higher with the STX, a little bit more away from center. And yep. yet you see that dispersion actually is a little tighter. Uh, which is interesting. Right, I mean that circle was a little bit closer together, so it's a little bit more consistent there, but that's why the ball is spending 400 RPMs less with the STX. STZ, go, back to that, go back to that screen on, on hit location there. Mm -hmm. So we're talking impact height, 14 millimeters versus 19 millimeters mm -hmm. in, in height. So five millimeters is making that huge difference in, in, in the, the location. spin, yeah, yep. interesting. Because I know now, you always said kind of, if you hit you know, above the middle of the face, that spin will go down with uh, a driver. Yep. And then it actually applies to, to pretty much every club, right? And then if you're hitting it low on the face or lower of center, that spin will go up. Yep. And you can kind of see how that is in effect here with, you know, your average hit location was much higher up with STX, that spin went down. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, you know, if we wish we had like Iron Byron. I'm, I'm pretty close, but the, the human, you know, elements always going to come into effect. Right. You know, human error is always going to be yeah. a, a, an issue there. And I can't swing the club the same every <laughs> single time. Yeah, I mean, your average speed yeah. was the same. <laughs> average speed was the same. Yeah, but you'll just notice what hit location does. Yep, and, yep. And then sure, there's probably subtle differences between maybe path and face angle and attack angle. But, yeah. you know, we're probably pretty close. I mean, this yeah. is a good representation of what these two drivers will do. STX is just going to draw a little bit more, more draw bias. Yeah. Even with the face a little open, we'll notice it still is a little bit left. Mm -hmm. STZ is going to go a little further, a little bit more ball speed, but you'll notice you know the clubs maybe not as forgiving as the STX. Yeah. So that's where you got to weigh the pros and cons between the two of them. For sure, for sure. Well, now we kind of talked about maybe chasing the distance here and seeing what the STZ has in store. Yet it's the you know furthest club in this particular one-on-one -on -one yep. test, but. Uh, now we can maybe optimize that. So what would you do to the STZ at nine and a half standard? How would you optimize that for you? Right, so, you know, I was swinging very, very smoothly at 110 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I'm swinging really well, I can get 115, 116 with the club speed. If I get there today, great. Yeah. But what happens is my attack angle is up even more. When you have more speed, it's generate more spin. It's gonna generate more height. So loft, we have to drop that loft down. Okay if I was going to swing fast at it with a high attack angle. So you'll drop that loft probably, and you can go I mean, two degrees. I go the extreme. You can I go mean, two degrees either way, so yep. you can go down to seven and a half degrees here. It's, it's fun to see because I'm sure everyone watching this video right now is wondering, wondering to see you know, how it compares versus the other models yeah, that have come for sure. out recently. So why not give them that? That's, that's low that right. loft and swing, Let's good, see it. swing hard like I was in the other videos and see what happens. Let's see it. An immediate jump in the ball speed. Yep. I like that. And already carrying it 300. It's a great start for. Which for I think you were right around 280 the last. You know, you were, I mean, I was with kind of well, the 110 club speed yep. and not optimized, but it is funny how quickly that can, you know, you can jump almost 20 yards based on, you know, a quick adjustment to the adjustable hosel. Right, it's loft, so attack angle is 6.8 degrees up. Mm -hmm. uh, landing angle is 41.7. I mentioned normally 30 to 40 is ideal. But if you keep that spin rate down, you can which optimize you a little bit, which mm -hmm. I did. So it's under 2,000 there, and that's just That's a really of, good, that's a great, you know, those are some serious numbers right there for Mizuno. Right, for a 114 club speed, that's pretty good. 
I might have left the face a little open on that one. It did. So that's why it's flying a little bit higher yeah. and a little bit more spin. Yeah, that you maybe caught the kind of the open, you know, the toe side a little bit with that face open. Yep. Yeah, so it's not always about club speed. You can see the club speed kind of jump yeah. there, but it didn't really pick me up any, mm -hmm. any distance. Right. It helps, but if you're not hitting the right spot, it's... Yep, that's that, you know, it's kind of that debate. You know, how hard do you swing? Because the harder you swing, the less likely you are to hit the center of the face, and right. that'll only hurt you. That spin might stay low, yeah. It's a great example right there. there of hell gear effect on the driver and, and so you didn't quite helps. didn't quite catch that one perfect you're thinking yeah mm -hmm. yep. a little high a little high knuckleball face. effect yep so even with you know swing a little bit faster we're still seeing that spin rate staying down mm -hmm. yeah. which is huge yes a better strike there, yeah. That's good there, yeah. That one's good. Yeah, hey, you're kind of hovering around that 300 carry number now, once it's optimized. Yeah, kind of right around about 320 total, 300 mm -hmm. carry is what we're, we're seeing. An ever so slight tug there, but I mean, yep. come on, that's still very good. I almost feel like my dispersion was just a touch better when I was swinging a little faster. Than I was going to bring that up. There you go. It, it was. Is. Yeah. Interesting there. So, and, and it's almost like, you know, dead in the middle too, in terms of like it's split evenly from left to right. You're not, you know, straying one way too far or the other. Yep. Uh, so, as we can see, things optimized for you. You swung a little bit harder at it for sure. You gained some ball speed, uh, and then we, we, the result is, you know basically from the first driver you hit, STX 220, you gained basically 20 yards of carry, you know, what, 13, 14 yards total. Um, and it's funny that the spin kind of, there was no really trend with the spin. It just kind of was fluctuating in that 16 to 2000 range. Yeah. Yeah, so it was about four miles an hour club speed and we're seeing that, that spin, you know, plus or minus 200 is still very, very good. Yeah. Um, we picked up, you know, with a little bit more ball speed, a little less spin, a little mm -hmm. higher ball flight. We're talking 12 yards. Yeah. Versus the versus, versus two, which is, I think 12 yards with swinging four miles an hour faster is worth it. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. then, you know, you get on the course and 12 yards, 15 yards, depending on the fairway, maybe. Maybe it's a dry fairway that rolls out a little further, but, um, you know, that can be a whole club. You know, you're hitting a pitching wedge seven nine iron into the par four or whatever it might be. So. Yep. Um, and that can, that's kind of that whole distance versus dispersion debate that's out there in golf now. And that's, you know, like Bryson, he's going for as many yards as he can get because he wants to hit the shortest club possible right. into the green. <laughs> so that's kind of that debate there. If you're comfortable with your irons, maybe you lay back and you, look, you like that white dispersion circle, right? Yep. But if you're chasing all the distance you can and you want to hit the shortest club into the green that you want, maybe the, the blue circle is the one you're looking at. So that's uh, something that you can chat with, you know, in your club fitting uh, here at Second Sequence of Fitter. And, you guys can work that out, but that's that, that's that debate there that I know is very popular at this point. Right, distance versus dispersion. I think today distance and dispersion won. Yeah. When I swung a little faster, decreased the loft a little bit. You know, let's face it. You know, we're looking at that orange circle versus that blue circle. It got smaller. Right. Spread out the screen, it's a little bit straighter. Hmm. Maybe a little oh. better fit for you. Better fit in, for me. in your swing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think ST two twenty drivers, you know, across the board, depending on what you're looking for, I think they l deliver uh, absolutely. Yeah, and I think the final thing just to touch on there is I'm still leaving some, some distance on the table with it. You yeah. look at the ball speed. Mm -hmm. Look at the efficiency. You know, yeah, you're not the, really hitting the center I'm of the not, face. I wasn't hitting it perfect today. Mm -hmm. So if I was you know, getting that close to that elusive 1.5 smash factor that everyone loves to, to see and right. also get, you know, we're talking ball speed numbers, you know, 170 plus, yeah. which is going to be another 10 yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's definitely distance out there. Mizuno definitely has delivered both distance, forgiveness, and that draw bias in STX. Uh, two really good options. Yep, forgiving and goes far. All right, Thomas, testing complete of the Mizuno ST220 drivers. Um, you know, before we kind of get into, you know, who's it, who they're each for, I uh, just wanted to get overall impressions after testing. You've got the numbers in front of you now. So is there anything else that jumps out at you that we haven't 
talked about yet? I still think the biggest thing, and we've already kind of touched it, is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And just just seeing, even though you know, smash factor numbers, you know, one four five, one four four, one four two, even, just how straight and yeah. how consistent the the spin rate stayed. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway. Is with these is, let's face it, we're not going to hit in the middle of the face every single time. Mm -hmm. I wish I could. <laughs> we all wish we could. Right. But we nice. want to play something that's forgiving, and I think these drivers are mm -hmm. very forgiving. I think the SDX is extremely forgiving, yep. very easy to hit straight, or a little bit more of a draw bias club. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see that weight down here. So speaking of you know the STX, who I think it's pretty clear you know the players may be struggling with that slice, but you know if you were to kind of categorize a player or a player type that would fit the STX here, what would you say? Well, I think you just think about what lofts come with the drivers. Yeah. You know, 10.5 is kind of the, the lowest option. So yeah. it's going to be for the golf where it doesn't swing as fast. Yeah. Um, is looking for a little bit more forgiveness. You know, mm -hmm. And then it's a draw bias club. So a golfer that curves the ball from yeah. left to right that's trying to help mm -hmm. get a little bit help to dial that in and hit the ball a little straighter. Yep. And then, uh, of course, the STZ model now, which I think we described already as kind of maybe fitting more players. but. Uh, there is a difference in shape too. That's something to to note. That maybe even your better high swing players might might like. Yeah, and it's yeah higher swing speed than you know STX. It's for the golfer that just wants to really hit it full straight. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness and very forgiving, very very straight. And we're not touching on today because that driver's already kind of come out in the past. But you've also got the ST two twenty G driver. Mm -hmm. Now that one you would add in the mix, that's going to even more of those faster swing speed people that like to dial in right. the numbers a little you bit more. All of those adjustment you know, yep. possibilities on the sole, that one where different sliding weights can go and a bunch of different slots. So that's for the really particular golfer that's really trying to fine tune. But then you have your STZ, which is kind of the more uh, you know, higher MOI, but also low spin, high launch type of driver. And then the STX, that draw bias, high MOI, very forgiving, very stable club head. So, uh, really good options from Mizuno. Now, again, like you mentioned with the STG 220, now you got the STZ, STX3, then really good models in 2022 that I know you'll be fitting a lot of customers into here uh, in the rest of the year. Yeah, I think more and more people will give Mizuno a chance. I know I will as a club fitter if I'm trying to do a, a head test. I'll throw it in the mix because I'm, I'm seeing it performing right now, right. seeing it perform in the past, the last couple of years. I think you've got to consider Mizuno drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, golfers, if you are considering Mizuno ST220 drivers, you know where to go. That's secondswing.com. You can order yours online, or you can speak with a certified master fitter. That's either in-store with a scheduled fitting or through our online fitting and support team. You can schedule those appointments online at secondswing.com. Thomas, thank you for joining today, doing all the testing, providing your insight. Again, these drivers, really, really good options here. Not a problem.